we found a bamboo forest. The Giardini La Mortella Botanical Garden. One of Ischia's best beaches right here. How nice is that? <laughs> We've got so much exciting stuff planned that you guys can add to your itinerary. Let's get into it. Starting another day by hiring the bikes. This is the way that we're getting around the island. 30 euros a day. You ready to go? I am. Off you go. We have made it to Giardini La Mortella. And if you do have a car, you have to park it in the spaces a thousand meters away. But fortunately with our electric bikes, we can just stick them right here. Oh. As we make our way through, there is plenty different kinds of vegetation and we get given these leaflets, which give us information of what we are actually looking at. But also there are little QR codes. You can scan them. It gives you a little bit of extra information sharp and spiky. We found a tree. It appears to have all these little sharp spiky things on them. So these gardens were originally developed by Susanna Walton in 1956, who was the wife of British composer William Walton. And they brought on board Russell Page, who was a landscape architect, to help develop these gardens. William Walton died in 1983. They developed the foundation, who now manages these lovely gardens. So it seems that the plants in this botanical garden are actually from all around the world, from Argentina, Mexico, South Africa. We've got some water lilies, this beautiful fountain, lots of lovely different vegetation in this garden. These things right here are giant water lilies, which generally only really grow in the Amazon, in Paraguay. So it's very, very difficult to maintain them. They can grow up to 40 centimeters in width. They can actually bear the weight of a child. Such a cool tree. Strange. It's from Thailand, which is actually the next place that I'm traveling to. And that's going to be where the next series is. Currently, we are in the William Walton recital room. If you come on a Saturday and Sunday, you can actually hear the chamber music done in a live fashion. So you can actually hear what his music was all about. And there's also an aviary with little budgies. There's some parrots at the top. So, so cute. Really enjoying this place. One of the great things about Italy is everywhere you travel, you will find these little portable drinking water stations where you can just grab your bottle and fill it up. What I find crazy is imagine being a foreigner, Lady Walton being Argentinian or William Walton being British and creating something in a foreign country that actually becomes one of the top visited sites in Ischia. That is really what I consider leaving a legacy. Here is actually where William Walton's ashes are kept. And here is where you can watch a performance with a stunning view in the distance. And it looks like we've made it to the Thai Asian inspired area. Lovely bamboos, which you can actually hear grow because they are one of the fastest growing plants in the world. You can hear the creaking. Wow, seems as though we found a bamboo forest. Oh, keep going, <laughs> this is fun. We've spent about three hours or so here at these gardens. I think that's a really good time to spend just a mill around, just to get a feel for the nature. What would you say? Amazing. Yeah. If you come here, probably wear some mosquito repellent because a mosquito bite. Back on the motorbikes. And off we go. So we came into Fiori looking for some pizza, but we found out that everywhere actually closes from about 1 p.m. It's now 3 p.m. It does have that kind of period between 1 and 4 where everything is closed. So we've just come to a little snack bar, got some sandwiches, prosciutto, ham, got a little espresso in true Italian style. Perfetto. Also here in Forio, there does seem to be a little beach here if you do want to go for a relaxed little swim after wandering through the streets of this little town. But I do believe we are moving on. Yes. Next spot, where to? Thermal Springs. Thermal Springs. 
we have made our way over to Poseidon, which has Poseidon Beach, very, very touristy, loads of people. But we've actually made our way over to the Poseidon Thermal Baths, which is 27 euros to enter after 4 p.m. But it is a little bit more expensive the earlier in the day that you come. Yeah, it just looks like a really fun day out. Now, everything does cost money here. Every time that you want to open the locker, if you want to get something out, it does cost one euro. And also to use the thermal baths, you do actually have to wear these caps and they are two euro 50 each. And it all starts with a little dip in the sea to relax your muscles. And then you move on to the thermal baths for different periods of time. Keep your tickets with you at all times. Yeah. So this is Poseidon Beach, which is private and you do need a ticket, but it is right next to Sidara Beach, which is a public beach. And essentially, you could just walk from down there over to here. Oh, oh it is so nice. The water is so warm. Ugh. Absolutely unreal here. It's a bit busy, but still unreal. So you go from the boiling hot Turkish sauna bath straight into Freezing cold, how is it? Stay in there for three minutes. No way. <laughs> there are around 15 different thermal baths, all at varying different temperatures. You're meant to start with the most coldest one first and gradually work your way up in temperature for a smaller period of time. It's absolutely beautiful here. And we are gradually working our way up in temperature, 34 degrees. It is lovely. Whoa. It is bath water, basically. And because it's the end of the day, it is pretty quiet which is more pleasant. See, how nice is that? <laughs> the best oh, one! Cool. Love it! Love it! All throughout these Poseidon thermal baths, you will see these thermal springs with scalding hot water. And that is because the different temperatures of these baths are all actually regulated through the natural thermal springs that are underneath here. So that is why all the different pools are at different temperatures. So there is definitely a benefit of staying right until the end because there is nobody else in the baths, but they do turn them off at like six, which is an hour before the place closes, but we can still experience the serenity and the peace of being in these baths on our own. Definitely make sure you add this to your list of things to do. I actually prefer these thermal baths to the ones in Budapest. I just think it's a lot more organized here with the different temperatures and the views of this place. You're looking out at the water just in front of you. The sun is shining. It's all in this lovely nature area with lots of vegetation. And as we are leaving this place, I've actually noticed that they actually drain all these pools to ensure it's super hygienic for the next people that come the next day, which is amazing. But I think this is the perfect place to end today's video. So if you guys have enjoyed this one, make sure you hit that like button and also hit the subscribe button and also the bell notification so you get notified for the weekly uploads. And also check out this playlist right here to see more from the Ishkia series. But as always, I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.